In this clip we'll talk about PLC diagnostics. It's a broad area of conversation so we'll just cover a few in this clip. First of all, field devices are probably one of the most common problems with PLCs. So before we even start worrying about whether the PLC is faulty, we should check our field devices. And of those field devices, the most common thing other than the devices themselves in the field is the I.O. modules. So the I.O. modules could be uh, damaged perhaps by a uh, faulty field device. Any approach to uh, diagnostics or fault finding in a PLC should be definitely systematic. You work through a system of steps and make sure you uh, isolate all the errors before you start. Most PLCs have uh, built-in diagnostics uh, in the hardware and so that when certain things occur the uh, diagnostic uh, flags will be set and that will uh, allow the user to find out uh, what's going on. There's also a software suite of tools uh, to further determine the more difficult problems. In the SLC 500 these live in the status file and I've got that status file up here on the screen now. You access the status file by double clicking on S2 on the status in your project tree and click along the tabs until you get to the error tab which is probably uh, the one where we'll start. In the S2 file the error tab is one of the most commonly used and we're probably interested here in particular in major error halt S113 bit and math overflow trap S50. There's also the fault routine word which is S29 and another is the battery low bit. In the fault routine S29 it's a, a area where you put the file number of where you may have a special routine that you want to run when a, when a fault in the PLC occurs. So in this uh, example here we've got a fault routine that's in uh, ladder file 3. Over here on the left hand side in the project tree you can see ladder file 3 with fault. So I've already created a fault routine. So if we click on the tab we can see here that our fault routine will unlatch an overflow in the PLC. So going back to the main tab now if an error occurs in our mass instruction here the PLC recognizes there's a problem an error and so automatically looks in the status file S2 looks in word S29 and if there's a number in there it will go to that file number and run the code that's in that file. Here we have a overflow underflow fag setting a, an alarm bit for our user to know that there has been a fault and also unlatching the overflow. So that fault routine keeps the housekeeping away from the user program but allows us to set back the fault so that the PLC keeps running and perhaps if it's on a night shift or something we can attend next day and we'll know that the, there has been a problem overnight because our overflow fault bit has been set. It's a very handy uh, feature of the SLCs and it should be really built into any program that uh, ha is likely to error due to uh, mathematical or data input problems. So just remember that that the fault routine is set up in S in Word S29 and you have your ladder routine in that fault routine to run to do the housekeeping and do the error checking and resetting as you require. So the PLC is not going to shut down at a fault. We also have the first pass bit, another very handy feature in diagnostics or setting up the PLC perhaps and that will initialize, well it'll send you to a program file that will initialize your PLC on the startup. So there's a rung here, rung 0 in this PLC, the first rung of the program. This uh, first part bit is true for the first scan of the PLC when it's put into run. 
this one shot here is optional, may not nece be necessarily required, but just as a safety, we've put the one shot in. Uh, so on the first pass of the PLC, this rung is scanned, that bit is true, the one shot is true. The program will then jump to ladder routine file number four. Number four is down here. We've clicked on the tab on below, and here we have an, another routine called we call it the initialize routine, and that will this instruction will clear all the binary bits uh, or put a zero in them, ready to start a new program run. You can do lots of things in here, and of course just like the fault routine, this is a common routine to have in a more complex program. Also in the S2 file are the other interrupts. We've used the fault routine interrupt as an example, but the STI, the selectable timed interrupt, and DII, the discrete input interrupt, are available. We cover these interrupts in more detail in another lesson. So that's PLC Diagnostic.